All right, guys, so today we're gonna talk a little bit about our linoleum cutters. So you may have used this before. Um, if you have, I just want to give you a quick refresher. If you have not, I want to introduce you to this tool. This is what we're going to use to cut our printmaking blocks. So the cool thing about a linoleum cutter is when you get it, there's nothing to obviously cut with. There's this little metal part right here. There's this end. This is actually the secret compartment. You unscrew this, and all the little blades live inside here. So when you're not using a blade, it should really be inside your linoleum cutter. So when you are getting started out, the first thing I want you to do is choose the blade that you need. Each of our linoleum cutters is going to have three blades inside. One is super teensy tiny, has a sharp little point. On the back, it's gonna have a number one. There will be another that probably has a number two on it. It's more of a V shape. And this is good for just general cutting. Um, the really tiny one is good for those itsy bitsy little details. And then you're going to have one that has the number three, four, or five on the back. These are our larger blades. These are better for scooping out larger areas. So let's say I know that I just want to begin um, outlining my image. I'm probably going to choose my number two blade, my uh, V shape. So I'm gonna put the other two blades back inside. Make sure that this is closed up tightly. Once it is, I'm gonna look at the top part right here, the metal part of my linoleum cutter. I'm going to unscrew it. Oh no, Miss Beam, I've broken my linoleum cutter. No, actually you haven't. This linoleum cutter, the top part, consists of three pieces. There's this little piece right here, it almost looks like a bullet or something. And then there are these two little pieces inside. The two little pieces inside fit together to create this little shape. So if it all falls apart, if you've got all three pieces, you're just gonna put these two smaller pieces together first. You're gonna hold this piece with the smaller hole facing down, and you're going to drop these two pieces inside it. Shake it around a bit, and then you can just go ahead and screw this part back on. So it is a little bit of a balancing act. You do want to loosen this, but typically you don't want to loosen it so much that it falls off. If it does fall off, that's okay. However, it just wastes some time, so we're gonna focus on not doing that. So when you look inside the linoleum um, cutter itself, this top metal part, you'll notice of those two pieces, one of them is a larger piece of metal with kind of a ball on it, and the other is a thinner piece of metal. There's actually a little gap right in here. So if I unscrew this just a bit, all of this loosens. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to look at my linoleum blade, I'm going to find the curved edge, not the sharp edge, but the curved edge, and gently I am going to slide that in between the two metal pieces in the center of my linoleum cutter. If it doesn't go in easily, I need to unscrew it a little bit more. You really want to wiggle it around, you really want to get the base, the curved base shoulders of the blade here, to hit this metal part. Once it's in, then you tighten it until it doesn't really turn anymore. You don't want to tighten it so tight you can't get it undone, but you do want it nice and firm so that when you carve, it's not gonna go anywhere. Okay, so now I am ready to start practicing with my blade. So again, I'm gonna choose which one I want. Let's go with this number two V shape. I'm gonna go ahead and put that in my linoleum cutter, trying to avoid the top of the blade here. Screw it in nice and tight. Okay, so now I have my linoleum block here. This is a slightly different type of linoleum than you guys will be using. You will be using actually a softer linoleum that is easier to cut, so you may need to apply less pressure than I do. However, we do have a great new tool this year. It's um, imperative for safely cutting printmaking blocks. This is called a bench hook. 
And what it does, the bottom of it hooks around the edge of your table, right down here, and the top of it holds your printing block in place. So you should never have your hand up here at the top because what's going to happen? If you have your hand up here at the top and your blade is heading toward it, that is a recipe for disaster. So we're not gonna do that. So you can keep your hand at the bottom. I actually like to put my hand at the bottom to kind of secure the block and then rest my other hand on top of it. And that is a great way to remind myself that this hand should never be up here. If I literally lay my other hand on it, it's not gonna move somewhere. So with my printing block, I could just carve freeform, but because we are going to be carving an image that it will already be on our blocks, let's go ahead and try that. So I'm looking at my image right now. Because I'm carving in this direction, up away from my hand, I want to see what lines will be the best to carve. Probably not that, right? I wanna go more up. So I'm going to put the tip of my blade down into the linoleum block, get just a little bit of a bite in. This is a slight angle. This is not like super steep because if it is, you'll gouge the block. It's not super shallow because then you won't carve, but it's kind of in between. It's like maybe, I'm not sure. I would have to see what angle it was with like a protractor, but. So I'm holding it in place and I'm slowly applying pressure from like my shoulder, from my elbow, up into the block. When I feel like I've um, put enough pressure on and I'm getting too much pushback here, what I'm going to do, I'm gonna flick this up a little bit and just remove the first piece. So for the next line, I can continue on And what I just did, that little slide, that will happen sometime, especially if you have um, a harder printing block. And that is really why you don't want your hand up here because this will slide uncontrollably into your hand. So what I'm gonna do next, obviously I don't wanna carve this piece across like that. I'm just gonna turn my printing block. Now, this allows me to get that upward and away from my hand motion that I need. Now I am carving on the lines. For you guys, you are not gonna be carving on the lines. You'll notice when I get to this point and I start to head in this direction, what am I gonna do? I'm not gonna awkwardly carve around this way. I'm going to turn my block again and pick this up from the best angle. So you really wanna be utilizing your printing block, making sure that it is working for you, holding this up here while your hand is safely down here. And before we start on your activist poster, we are going to take a little bit of time just to practice. Maybe I'm gonna have you carve your name on the back. Just do a few practice lines because it is really good to get a sense of what this tool can do. You can wiggle it around a little bit to make some cool texture lines. If you press more deeply, you are going to get larger bits coming out. However, if you want really large bits, again, it's not the best to use um, the number two blade. Instead, you're gonna wanna trade for one of the higher numbers. But just sliding it across the surface and getting used to how it feels and how it works.